Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at how MATLAB defines scalars, vectors, matrices, and multi-dimensional arrays. This can be a little bit confusing because how scalars and vectors are defined in MATLAB is quite a bit different than how they are defined in an introductory level physics course. To help out, I've also created a cheat sheet on this topic. You can find a link to it in the description below. Let's get started. In MATLAB, all variables are multidimensional arrays, no matter what type of data. Therefore, scalars, vectors, and matrices are all arrays. However, using the generic term array can be confusing because it doesn't indicate the size or number of dimensions of a variable. So let's take a look at how MATLAB describes scalars, vectors, and matrices. First, let's take a look at matrices. In MATLAB, a matrix is a two-dimensional array that has a size of M by N, where M and N are both non-negative integers. The number of rows in the matrix are given by M, while the number of columns are given by N. Let's take a look at an example. Consider the following matrix A. A has three rows and three columns, and therefore A is a three by three matrix, where M is again the number of rows and N is the number of columns. Now let's take a look at how MATLAB defines vectors. In MATLAB, a vector is technically a two-dimensional array that has a size of a 1 by n, in other words, one row and n number of columns, or m by 1, in other words, m number of rows and one column. And again, m and n are both non-negative integers. However, Many programmers would refer to vectors as one-dimensional arrays to avoid confusion with matrices. There are two different classifications of vectors. A row vector has a size of 1 by n. In other words, it contains a single row with one or more columns. And a column vector has a size of m by 1. In other words, it is a single column with one or more rows. For example, consider the following vectors. Vector B has one row and three columns, and so therefore B is a row vector of size 1 by 3. Vector C has three rows and one column, and so vector C is a column vector of size 3 by 1. Now let's take a look at how MATLAB defines scalars. In MATLAB, a scalar is also technically a two-dimensional array that has a size of 1 by 1. As with vectors, many programmers would not refer to scalars as two-dimensional to avoid confusion. For example, consider the following scalar D. D has one row and one column, and D is a scalar variable of size one by one. Finally, let's take a look at how MATLAB defines multidimensional arrays. In MATLAB, a multidimensional array is an array with more than two dimensions. A multidimensional array has a size of m by n by p. m is the number of rows, n is the number of columns, and p stands for pages inside of MATLAB. We'll look at an illustration to see what this means. And again, m, n, and p are non-negative integers. So let's take a look at an example where we see multi-dimensional array E. In this case, 
our multi-dimensional array E has three rows, three columns, and three of what MATLAB would call pages. So multi-dimensional array E has a size of three by three by three. Three rows by three columns and three pages. Now let's jump over to MATLAB to see how we can have MATLAB tell us if a variable is a vector, a scalar, or a matrix, and also provide us with the size and number of dimensions of our variable. Now that we're in MATLAB, we're going to define a few variables in the command window. And as the purpose of this video is to show the subtle differences between how MATLAB defines scalars, vectors, and matrices, we are not going to create these variables manually. Rather, we're going to use the random function. And the random function fills a variable of a specified size with random values. So first, let's create a three by three matrix. And we will call that matrix A. So A is equal to or is assigned the value of. We are going to use the random function. And the arguments inside of this function are the size. Okay, so first we'll start with the number of rows, let's say three, and the number of columns, three. And this returns a three by three matrix filled with random values. So there is a fairly useful function inside of MATLAB that determines the size of a variable. And unsurprisingly, the name of that function is size. So we could do size, the name of the function of variable A, and we get a result of three by three. What that indicates is three rows and three columns as expected. Now, we may want to determine if MATLAB recognizes this variable as a matrix. And to do that, we can use the isMatrix function. So is matrix, and when we run this by pressing enter in the command window, we get a result of one. One indicates true, and a result of zero would indicate false. So here we see that MATLAB does recognize matrix A as a matrix. Next, let's create a row vector and we'll assign it to the variable B. So we'll use the random function again, and since we are creating a row vector, we will have a single row and let's say three columns. So now we have defined our variable and we can see here that we have a row. If we looked at the size of variable B, we get a result of one by three, one row and three columns as expected. Now we can also see if MATLAB recognizes this variable as a vector by using the isVector function. So we have isVector B, we get a result of one, which is true, and we can actually get a little bit more detail here. So yes, Variable B is a vector, but is it a row vector or a column vector? And there are two functions for that, and their names are somewhat unsurprising. The first is isRow, and the second is isColumn. Now, in this case, let's use isColumn. And when we use is column, we get a result of zero, that is false. So while this is a vector, it is not a column vector. And if we use the function is row, we get a result of one, which indicates true. So that's pretty useful. Now let's define a scalar 
And we actually don't even need to use the random function here. We could if you guys wished, but let's just define a scalar and we'll call it C and assign it the value of five. So it doesn't take much time to create that. So, hey, why not? So here is our variable C. And if we looked at the size of variable C, we get a result of one by one, one row and one column. And again, this is somewhat weird, but we have to remember that all variables inside of MATLAB are multi-dimensional arrays. And what that means is the minimum number of dimensions that we could have would be two, because we have to have one row and one column at minimum. Next, we can determine if MATLAB recognizes this variable as a scalar using the isScalar function. So we have isScalar, of our variable, we get a result of one as expected. Now let's jump back and take a look again at how MATLAB defines some of these variables. So for example, because of how MATLAB defines a scalar, a vector, and a matrix, we can get some somewhat surprising classifications. So let's take a look. Let's start by taking a look at the matrix on the screen. This variable has a size of three by three. In other words, three rows by three columns. And that's what we would expect to see. The function in dims in MATLAB returns the number of dimensions in the array. And so if we used this function, we would find that our variable has two dimensions. Next, we could use the isScalar function to determine if our variable is a scalar and we get a return value of zero or false. Likewise, we could use the isVector function to determine if our variable is a vector. And similarly, we get a return value of zero or false. And finally, we could use the isMatrix function to determine if our variable is a matrix. And this time, we are returned a value of 1, which indicates true. And this makes pretty good sense, but we're going to find that when we look at vectors and scalars, we can get some weird results. So here is what I would refer to as a row vector. And the size of this row vector is one by three, one row and three columns. Then if we use the indims function to return the number of dimensions of this variable, we get a result of two, which can be somewhat confusing because this may look like it's one dimensional. We only have a single row. But this is because all variables in MATLAB are multi-dimensional arrays and the number of dimensions in an array is always greater than or equal to two. And you can really see this when you look at the size of a variable because you'll have at least two values reported. The first being the number of rows, in this case one, and the second being the number of columns, in this case three. So that can be a little bit confusing, but do expect a minimum return value of two when using the indims function. Next, we can use the isScalar function to determine if this variable is a scalar and we get a value of zero or false. We can use the isVector function to determine if this variable is a vector and we get a result of one, which indicates true. And then we can use the isMatrix function to determine if our variable is a matrix and weirdly, we also get a result of one, which indicates true. 
Now this is because of how MATLAB defines vectors and matrices. In MATLAB, a matrix is a two-dimensional array. Okay, well, we've seen that this row vector does have two dimensions from the nDIMS function. And a matrix is a two-dimensional array that has a size of m by n. And here's the really important part where m and n are non-negative integers. Okay, well, that's interesting because one is a non-negative integer. So even though this row vector only contains a single row, it is also classified in MATLAB as a matrix, which can be a little bit confusing. So what that means is row vectors and column vectors are not scalars, but they are vectors and matrices. So that's somewhat interesting. Now let's look at a even weirder example here, but maybe you can identify what's going on already. So we have our variable, which I personally would refer to as a scalar. The size of this variable is one by one. In other words, one row and one column. And as previously mentioned, the number of dimensions in an array is always greater than or equal to two. So when we use the nDIMS function, we are expecting this result in MATLAB, even for a scalar variable. We can use the isScalar function to determine if our variable is a scalar and we get a result of one, which indicates true. We can use the isVector function to determine if this variable is a vector. And again, maybe somewhat surprisingly, we get a result of one and that is true. And this is because of how MATLAB defines vectors, which is very similar to how it defines matrices. So let's take a look. In MATLAB, a vector is a two-dimensional array. So again, we're seeing two dimensions that has a size of one by n, one row and n number of columns, or m by one, m rows and one number of columns, where m and n are non-negative integers. And again, that's really the key here. So uh, our dimensions in this case are one, well, that's a non-negative integer by one, also a non-negative integer, and therefore, this scalar variable is also a vector and by the exact same argument, also a matrix. All right, guys, that's it. I hope that this video provided you with a good explanation of the subtle differences between how MATLAB describes and defines scalars, vectors, and matrices. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more, subscribe below. If you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a member on Patreon or check out some of the Spartan Professor merchandise available on Teespring. You can find me at David Calamus on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn.